get that shot, get that shot. Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder, and today I'm at Home Depot. I'm gonna go inside and find the cheapest offset smoker I can and use it to cook a brisket. Before we get into today's video, I wanna take a chance to thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. Now, if you don't know what Skillshare is, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes where you can pursue your interest. Now, for me, when I was growing up, I hated school. I did well in school, but I hated it because we had to learn things that I did not care about. With Skillshare, you can learn whatever you want to pursue. So if you'd like to learn things like how to brew a cup of coffee, or how to make a YouTube video, or even how to start your own business, Skillshare has those opportunities where you can pursue your passion and learn things that are important to you. Now for me, I just took a class on iPhone filmmaking when I was in the mountains in Colorado hunting elk. It was tremendously valuable to me to be able to know how to get the shots that I need. But the next class I want to take is From Plant to Cup, Brew an Amazing Cup of Coffee by Michael Phillips. Now, I've been somebody who's always been able to appreciate coffee that's not so great. But I thought I should expand my horizons here and learn to appreciate great coffee. And I think this class is gonna help me do it. The first thousand of my subscribers who click on the link below in the description are gonna get a free trial to Skillshare Premium. So you got nothing to lose. And then after that, if you wanna get an annual membership, it's less than $10 a month. So, great option. I encourage you guys to at least check it out. But now let's get into the video. Hundred and ninety nine bucks. It's actually a little thicker than I thought it would be. This thing is terrible. Alright, find the cheapest one they have. It is called the Next Grill Barrel Smoker with Offset. It's 139 bucks and I have a 15% off coupon. So this thing is gonna leave with me for just over hundred bucks. Not bad. After dealing with a bunch of quarter inch thick smokers, that thing is light as a feather. I just realized I forgot to get charcoal. Alright, back to Home Depot. Here we go. Now that I'm back from my elk hunting trip, I want to revisit the project of the cheapest smoker at Home Depot. So, what I have here is a high quality brisket. And I have seasoned it. I have trimmed it. Not in that order. But I've done both of those things. This thing should be good to go. I am extremely confident if I put this on my Brazos or on my 500 gallon, this thing would turn out great as long as I'm diligent about watching the fire. On this one, I have no idea. This smoker was, I think, $139.99, and I think we got it 20% off of that. We got this thing ready to go. We're gonna put it on. We're gonna check back on it in probably an hour, and then we're gonna, in the meantime, review some of the features of this little smoker. As you may have guessed, this is not an ad for the next grill. It is extremely flimsy, very lightweight. Um, I can pick it up and hold it over my head. Like everything moves, everything bends. This is not the same thing as a quarter inch thick offset. But the goal of the video is for me to see if I can make great brisket even on a flimsy cheap smoker because a lot of people don't have a budget to spend, you know, multiple thousands of dollars on a custom smoker and they're dealing with something like this that maybe they got on clearance at Home Depot and they still want to try to make great barbecue. So I'm going to do my best to be able to do that. Now, a couple things. This thing obviously leaks smoke. Uh, the firebox is tiny, so you have to use either wood chunks with a bed of charcoal or I'm using tiny little wood splits and then I chop those in half and put those in there. Um, it's just not easy to try to burn a real wood fire in there. So we're gonna have to go charcoal with wood layered on top. Another issue is uh, this thermometer came with uh, some condensation already in the gauge. That's wonderful. Also, if you look at this guy, even though I don't have much wood, there's still fire licking into the cook chamber and that's not great, but we're gonna try to mitigate that, use smaller chunks of wood and keep most of the heat coming from the charcoal. So on a little tiny smoker like this, the way you have to run it to be successful, at least in my opinion, is better charcoal and then you add wood for flavor. So the wood isn't doing the primary heating, but it's doing the flavoring that you want rather than you know a big offset or even just a really heavy offset that's a backyard size where you're burning wood as 
the heat and the flavor. Here, wood is just the flavor, it's not really there for the heat. So you could use chips, you could use chunks, you could use tiny splits. I'm using tiny splits. Um, I just like the flavor that you get when you burn splits. I think it's a little bit better than chunks and um, wood chips. I just think it's a superior way to go. And on this cook, I'm trying to do it the best way that I think I can to make this brisket a success. Now, as we put this thing on, I'm kind of wafting the faint aroma of paint burning from the firebox. I really hope that it doesn't really flavor the meat inside because that would be a big bummer. But um, we're gonna stick with this. I'm gonna do my best to make it great. And we're gonna see what we can do. All right, so we have this flimsy smoker. The brisket in there is worth two thirds of the cost of the smoker probably. Uh, but now it's time to check in to see how it's doing. So we're gonna look for color. We're gonna look for fat render. And we're gonna look to see if anything is burning. Now, I have been watching this thing like an absolute hawk, making sure that there are no temperature spikes. I've been adding lump charcoal as it's needed. I've been adding chunks of wood as it's needed, which means I go take you know a big log of wood. I cut it into small splits and then I chop those splits in half and use those to flavor the meat. So I don't know what I'm gonna see, but I'm hoping for good things. So let's find out. All right, so first impressions, uh, I am very impressed. I'm actually extremely happy with how this thing looks. I can't taste the smoke flavor. I know it's not gonna be as clean as if I've been you know, cooking this thing in my Brazos or in my 500 gallon offset or the 1000 gallon offset that I'm building, but it looks great. We have deep red color. Uh, the fat's starting to render. You can start to see pooling fat on the top. All those are amazingly good signs. Uh, I think this is so far a complete success. Now I could blow it. I could totally ruin this thing, but it's been a long time since I cooked on a cheap flimsy smoker like this. So I hope that the principles that I've learned from doing lots and lots and lots of barbecue, like thousands and thousands of hours are gonna hold true for me here. And so far it's looking really good. At this point, I'm gonna start spraying. So on this front end, things are starting to get a little dry. So I'm gonna spray that, try to soften that up a little bit. But overall, I am thrilled with how this thing looks. One other thing that I've noticed is that there is no grease drain in this hunk of junk. So right now, all of the grease that's coming off of this brisket is now pooling in the bottom of the cook chamber. So it's making its way over toward the firebox. If it gets really two inches closer or so, I'm gonna have to find some way to deal with that. I don't want a grease fire to ruin this brisket because the whole point of this thing is that I want to be able to show people how to cook a brisket on what they probably have in their backyards. All right, one more thing that I've noticed is that in the nascent beginnings of the very first cook ever on the smoker, all the paint on the firebox is bubbling and starting to peel off, which doesn't bode well for its future. Because this metal is so thin that if you remove the paint kind of coating to shield it from the elements, it's gonna rust through like that. All right, so checking in on this brisket, we've had this thing on here for about seven and a half hours. So if we take a look at it, right now we have really good color, nothing's burning, everything is looking spot on. I couldn't really be any happier with how this is turning out even though it has been a chore to try to get this fire to burn clean. As you can see right now, there's not tons of smoke billowing out. That's because I'm trying to make the fire as efficient as possible, small pieces of wood that I'm adding. Occasionally I'll add some lump charcoal just to make sure that the heat keeps going. But overall, this is looking great and pretty soon it's gonna be time to wrap it. We're probably gonna be looking at a final temperature of about 203 degrees, but that can vary some, you know, plus or minus five degrees, just depending on how long it's cooked, the type of brisket you're cooking. But we're gonna check by taking the probe, putting it in, and if the probe is telling me that it's in the right temperature range and it feels like softened butter, then I know I'm done. So it's gonna be a straightforward cook like that, but the keys that I've been focusing on are clean fire management. I have videos on that, I'll put those in the description, and just making sure that the temperature doesn't fluctuate too much, doesn't go too high, doesn't go too low, trying to be as consistent as possible. But what that requires is me being very diligent about checking what's in the firebox, you know, laying individual pieces of wood in there just so, so they'll catch well and they'll burn cleanly. It's a lot of effort, but so far the results couldn't be much better. All right, it's been about eight hours now, and so I'm gonna check in on this brisket, see if it's ready to wrap. And to me, that dark color tells me it's time to wrap. It's got plenty of smoke flavor on it, and so it's ready to go. Now, I've wrapped, I don't know how many briskets on camera, so you don't need to see that. Two layers of 18 inch butcher paper, roll it up, seal it tight, put it back on the cooker, let it finish. So nothing is burning here. No, this is just bark. That's not burnt, that's bark. Um, all that's good. Uh, also, if you want to, you can check the temperature. I have my uh, thermopen here. And these things are amazing because well, they're waterproof. Anyway, so let's see, where are we? 
172. That also tells me we're in about the right place. And then also, new feature. Hey buddy, hey buddy, you want some of this brisket? I know you do. Nope, nope, not for you, not for dogs. Only for people, this is just people food. I'll give you some scraps, I'll make you that deal. All right, but with this new thermopen, I have the infrared probe so I can get the surface temperature of the brisket and that is about 204. So what that tells me is we're rendering fat well and the brisket is at the internal temperature where I want to wrap because if I wait too long, it'll dry out. I'll you know lose too much of that fat in the cooking process. If I wrap too early, the wrap will get soupy and it'll wash away the bark that I've worked so hard to create. Now, the quality of this bark isn't gonna be as good as if I were burning an all wood fire, but this can still be really good. It looks really good, smells really good. I think it's still gonna be top notch, but we're not gonna know until the end of the process. So I'm gonna wrap this guy up, finish it off. I'll pull it off when it reaches about 203, and then I'm gonna take it inside and we're gonna unwrap it and look at it together and see how the results turned out. All right, just to demonstrate, if you have the probe out, you'll get the probe reading. If you close the probe, then hit this button, like such, it'll tell you the temperature thing. Apparently my hand is 92 degrees. There are a few hobbies that I have, a few things that I really love, and any kind of gadget that relates to that, I love. So th to me, this is amazing. If you're interested in this, I'll put a link in the description. Yes, it is an affiliate link, but I spent my own money on this thing because I wanted it, and I don't ever you know, promote anything I don't actually believe in. So this is something I really like. And if you can spend $5 more than just a regular thermopen to get this infrared thermometer along with it, I would. All right, we wrapped it up. We finished it off, got it to the internal temperature and the internal doneness feeling that we wanted. And we pulled it out and now we're sitting on the cutting board just kind of resting here. I'm really impressed with the color that it has. It looks really good. It looks really juicy. And I mean, I didn't expect it to turn out this well. So. I expected it to be a mediocre brisket, but this one really looks pretty darn good. Now it's not as dark as a brisket that I would cook on my offset smokers um, that I use normally where I burn an all wood fire, but that's to be expected. But it looks really nice, really dark red, um, some places nearly black and really juicy. So I'm excited to cut this thing open, check out the moisture on the inside and give it a taste test because ultimately taste is gonna be the determination for how well you cook this brisket. So when I look at this part of the point right here, I see a couple things that look really good. Number one, it looks very moist. It's kind of glistening with fat. Number two is I see a big, thick smoke ring. And to be quite honest with you, this is a bigger smoke ring than I usually get on my big offset. So it's kind of interesting to me. I don't know the exact explanation as to why, but it's interesting. It should have some good smoke flavor on there. Now, I'm gonna do a taste test of the point and of the flat. So I'm gonna get an end cut here from the flat. Tell me that's not juicy. <laughs> Looks pretty darn good. All right, I have to admit, I am shocked. Completely shocked. This is hands down better than any barbecue restaurant I've eaten at that's not in Central Texas. Um, it's not even close. It's not like a 1A and 1B type of thing. It's, this thing is head and shoulders above anything I've had at a barbecue restaurant that doesn't use an offset smoker. It, there's no comparison at all. I am blown away. It's moist, it's tender, it's smoky, it's clean smoke. Quite frankly, if I had this brisket at a legit OG barbecue place, I'd be like, oh yeah, tastes pretty darn good. I mean, this is 90, no, like 97% as good as the briskets I can make on my big offset. Now, it doesn't have the richness of flavor that you get, but I mean, my goodness, it's close. All right, last thing I wanna taste is one of these burnt ends. So this being my brisket, I'll just carve out a chunk right here and uh, we'll see how it goes. Looks good, Ooh, it's plenty juicy. Looks like it's got good bark on the exterior, everything you want in a piece of brisket. So I'm gonna take a bite of this guy and see how it goes. That is unbelievable. 
I have to be honest, I'm kind of at a loss for words. I can't believe how good this turned out. So my expectation was this would be absolute trash, and I could say, that's why you don't buy garbage smokers. Um, I did everything I could to make this the best possible brisket you know, I can make on that thing, and I am blown away at how good this is. Now, there's still difference between you know, what I make on that thing, what I make on the Brazos, versus what I make on my 500 gallon offset, but that difference is small. That's, it's unbelievable to me. So I guess we've reached an answer to the question. You can make great brisket on a cheap offset smoker. Now, to be honest, at the start of this, I didn't think you could, but I just proved it to myself. And um, I was kind of wondering if, if you really know the principles of barbecue, if you can apply those to kind of cheap equipment. And it starts to make sense to me because when I was in school, I played trombone. And I was at one point trying to upgrade from a beginner instrument to you know, a professional level instrument. So something that's made a lot better than the you know, piece of junk that I was using. And so I remember my band director told me, he's like, Jeremy, you know, if you're a great trombonist, you can make a tin can sound good. And it didn't really sink in at the time, but what he was trying to say is that if you know all the principles, you're doing everything right. It's not the equipment that makes the barbecue great. It's the pit master in this case. So it's the pit master who makes the barbecue great. It's not the equipment. Now, equipment can definitely help. So there are no people in professional orchestras who are using beginner instruments. So equipment does matter, but what's more important than the equipment is the skills of the pit master who's doing the cooking. Because I could take a you know, Stradivarius violin and try to play it, and it would be absolute trash. So it's not the equipment that makes the barbecue. It's the skills that you use, and you can be aided in that process by the equipment. So if you can afford it, get great equipment. If you can't, don't lose heart. You can still make amazing barbecue, even with cheap stuff. So in summation, I learned something. I hope you guys learned something. If you did and you liked this video, hit the like button down below, hit subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you get notified every time we put out new videos. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'll see you guys next time.